But an electric guitar, I mean, I don't understand. It's, it's a piece of wood, right? Mm -hmm. With a neck. And no, that's exactly where people think that it is just a piece of wood with a neck. And it is a piece of wood with a neck, but it's, it's about what that piece of wood is, you know? How old is the wood? How does the wood resonate? When you tap it, does it ring? Does it thud? How it's all joined together is really an important thing as well, right? Like, be, especially building on a, on what you would consider to be a mass-produced style of building, like like a, like a Telecaster, yeah. which was it's a shape. Right? It's a shape, and it was meant to be. It was meant to be. That guitar was designed by Leo Fender, to be mass-produced, to be produced quickly, to be able to be repaired very quickly, and you go, well, well what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a there's a lot of big deals about it, like how that. We won't even talk about how the guitar feels and how it plays, but to match the neck pocket into the into the you know with the neck, it sounds like an easy job. It's not an easy job. I can speak from experience. <laughs> it's not an easy job. It's got to be perfect because if right. it's not perfect, the guitar will not sing. I I used to think that it, it was all hooey about you know electric guitars and wood and all that that stuff, right? And that was a while back, you know. When now, I now, I, now I, you've I, come I, to the dark <laughs> side, my friend. I, I have brought I'm you on to the, the dark, dark side, side now. <laughs> and so once you once you get all those woods all lined up and the neck pocket nice and tight and everything's lined up, then you go crazy and you put in weird pickups. Yeah. Or you 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 know you have fun with your electric guitar by by putting pickups in it. You know, T. Jones pickups on Paul's telly, for instance. And they all sound different. Why? Oh, you know, well, once again, it's, it's like this is a combination of spruce and, and walnut and, you know, and mahogany. That pickup is, is a combination of a special kind of magnet. Is it, is it an Alnico 3? Is it an Alnico 5? Is it ceramic? Now we're going crazy. You see? Well, how <laughs> thick's your wire? How thick's your wire? Your wire, your wire makes a difference. The wire what, in the pickup. The wire in the pickup. Yeah. What's the bobbin made out of? Is it made of plastic? Is, it made out of, is it made out of... Who wound cardboard? your pickup? Yeah. No. Was it, did Abigail wind the pickup? Yeah. If Abigail wound the, wound the pickup, then it's golden. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I met <laughs> Abigail. Abigail was... Was the longest? Now, this is a good story. Yeah, she was the. She's. I believe she was the longest-standing employee of Fender, for years, uh, and she started in the fifties. And she retired. I met her just after she retired. She retired three years ago, and she all she did was make pickups. Huh. All so, that time. All that time, and she sat in front of what looked like a modified sewing machine back in the early days, and just wound pickups. And her pickups are some of the most desired pickups in the world. Incredible. Because. She wrote, she, she's been doing it since the early days. She, she, she made the originals. Around. She got them all lined up, all those wires lined yeah. up. They weren't. She had a certain know. way of doing it. If the, if the, you know, if they're all straight on the bobbin, like they're perfect, like you would see, like a, like a, like a spool of thread. Uh -huh. It's a pickup's going to sound one way. If the, if they're crossed, if they're going across each other, it's going to sound a different way. If they're completely like a rat's nest, it sounds even different, more different. So this has been a, a learning curve. Yeah, and this is. Well, now I've turned into one of them. Now guys. he's a geek. Now he's a geek. Now he's a geek like me. I don't. So you spend a lot. And I don't even know what <laughs> half the stuff he's talking about. But I'm, you know, I go home at night and I get out my dictionary and I start looking and I get online and I start talking about bobbins and <laughs> Abigail and I'm, I'm getting there. As if you know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. You know, it's, it's all a bunch of, uh, you know, you gotta. You can't admit that you don't know what people are talking about in the guitar world. Never. Always. Oh, oh of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah, those pickups really sing. Yeah. What kind of pickups was he talking about? <laughs> I don't know. They're awesome, though. I remember that line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and if if all else fails, just say mahogany. Yeah. Mahogany, is the, that's, the, that's the word. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's mahogany. But, <laughs> so we're, we're taking the Telecaster to a different, different level now because, you know, tellies would traditionally be made out of swamp. Ash, right? Yeah. So now we're making the Douglas Fir Telecaster, which is nothing new, but for me it's new. Right. And we have tons of Douglas Fir. We're in Douglas Fir heaven here. And you're Vancouver. reclaiming some, some old wood too. Yeah, you just them, right? go into an old building and take a chainsaw and away you go. You come back with a couple of Telecaster bodies. Yeah. <laughs> harvesting. <laughs> urban harvesting. Urban, urban harvesting. I like that. Wood, yeah. you know, so if you have an old building and you see us knocking on your door, you might want to consider the, the validity of your roof. Be afraid. 